Welcome back to our channel, fine fellows. In this tutorial, we're going to be giving our first person character the ability to smoothly crouch using the new enhanced input system. You can follow this tutorial even if you're not specifically watching our entire FPS series, though I do recommend you watch the whole thing. We're making some really cool things in this one. In any case, let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is always, if you don't have it open already, I'm going to open the BP character, so our character blueprint. Inside of this blueprint, we're going to need to add a crouching event. As always, this is going to come from an input action, so the first move we're going to take in this chess game is making an input action. We'll go to data. Inside of here, I'm going to right click, find input input action, and just call it IA Crouch. Now we have our input action. We don't need to do anything else inside of the input action, but we do need to head to our input mapping context so we can bind this to a key. Let's first add a mapping. The mapping is naturally going to point to our new input action crouch. And inside of it, if we unfold it, we're going to select a key value I'm actually going to show you a few things, but let, let's start with the just the C key. You can either click here and press it or just find it here. That's also fine. It's just going to take longer. In any case, this should have created the crouch event for us. So we can now go to our character blueprint, right click and search for IA crouch. That's going to give us the event. Now, let's start by adding the crouching sort of the normal way people do this in Unreal Engine, and then we'll do it in a bit of a more fun way. The first way to crouch is we just drag from the triggered event and we call crouch. This is a function that comes with the character blueprint. That's basically it. This is really just going to allow you to crouch. So if I go to the map and play and then just tap C, that is technically crouching. Uh, we might just not be seeing it. Actually, let's debug that. This is a bit confusing. In fact, it, it's so confusing. Yeah, we are definitely crouching. The only issue we have, actually, um, is that we still need to enable the crouching on the character movement component. That's why we weren't seeing crouching. This is great, because this is almost like a debug process at this point. So I'm going to really just go to class defaults and search for can crouch, which is a little toggle that is actually on the character movement component, but we can search for it here now too. And I'm going to enable that. And that's going to allow us to crouch. So now I can crouch. I can't uncrouch, so I'm stuck kind of crouched forever. And also the arms are not crouching, but we'll fix that in a pretty pretty soon in a tutorial let's uh let's also add uncrouching one way to do this would be to make it kind of a hold crouch and the way we would do that is we would call crouch whenever we trigger the action and then when we, when it gets completed we would just call uncrouch so as soon as we stop holding the crouch key we would uncrouch so if i hold c i crouch i stop holding i uncrouch you can also make this into a toggle crouch. And the way you would do that, well, there's a few ways. The first one is very simple. You can just call this little node here or little action called flip flop, which alternates between A and B outputs, starting with A. So all this does is whenever we click the triggered event, we can kind of flip flop between these two. Now, one thing that might happen though, is that since the triggered event is going to get called a lot of times while we hold, this is going to constantly swap between crouching and uncrouching, and it's going to look like this, which is really weird. So don't do that. Add a little node before that called do once. And do once is going to make sure that this is only going to get called once until, and until we call this reset node right here, and we will call that on completed, which was when we stop holding the key. So with that, we are basically triggering the input. That's going to make this kind of flip flop. The first time it's just going to run crouch. Um, this won't run again un un unless we complete the event. So we stop holding the key. And then the next time we trigger it, it's going to call this flip flop, which is going to go to B. 
So if we save that, I tap, 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 tap. So now we have crouching. Okay, that's great. One thing we can do, um, in case you kind of like the way this is structured, we could make a variable and allow people to switch between hold crouch and tap crouch. The way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go to variables. I'm going to create a Boolean variable. I'm going to call this crouch is hold, or actually just let's just call it hold crouch. I'm going to drag this variable. And the way we're going to use this is we're going to add a branch. We're going to use this hold crouch variable as the condition. And here's how we're going to do this. We are going to, instead of doing this whole kind of uh, this whole thing, we will do two things right here. Instead of the flip flop, whenever we trigger the action, if we want to hold crouch, we would always just call crouch. You can also just copy paste it to be fair. That would make it clearer. And then if we don't want to use hold crouch and we want to use tap crouch, then we're just going to use the flip flop. Let me just move this a little bit. Okay. And we also need to make sure that the, well, actually the completed is already going to work. The only thing we need to make sure is that we also call uncrouch when we complete, if we're using hold crouch. So same kind of deal. In the completed event, we drag it to hold crouch. And then if we are using hold crouch, then we uncrouch. Now, this code is going to make sure that we only get the crouching called once. Also, do make sure that no matter what, you also still call this do once. You can do that by just dragging both of these pins in here. Or one other way to do that would be to add, if you right click and call a sequence node, this is just going to allow us to do two things kind of in a sequence. So the first one would be this code, and then the second one would be the reset. So now, basically, every time the crouch event gets triggered, we run this do once, which is just going to allow us to pass the first time, but not run this any other times. We want to use hold crouch. When we first kind of trigger it, it's going to call crouch. If we don't, then it's going to flip-flop between crouch and uncrouch. And then when we reset, so when we stop holding the crouch key, it's going to check if we're using hold crouch. And if it is, then obviously it's going to stop crouching because we stop holding the key. And then it's going to reset this node so we can rerun crouch when we press. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. Let's try it. By default, by the way, this hold crouch value, if I just clear this detail panel right here, is going to be false. So we are not going to be using hold crouch. But if I press here, it's just going to be toggle crouch. You can see that it works perfectly. And if I go to the character and I set this to true, you can either do that from the variable itself or from class defaults. If you can find it somewhere, you'll see the variable. You can set it to true there. Now, if I tap, you can see that it crouches and uncrouches. But if I hold, it crouches. And when I stop holding, it uncrouches. That's great. Now, one issue that I am seeing with this, though, and this is what happens with the default crouching, is that it isn't smooth. We're not really having a smooth crouching experience, which I've always found somewhat annoying because most games do have a smooth crouch so we don't really want this snappy crouch to fix that we're just not going to use these crouch and uncrouch functions we're going to make our own how do we do that well i'm just going to start by right clicking anywhere in our blueprint adding a custom event and i'm going to call this custom crouch i will duplicate this Control c Control v and make a custom uncrouch and we will do exactly the same kind of timeline thing that we did for the running, but we will do this for crouching. Now, what will we actually change to make the character crouch, though? Well, let's see what Unreal changes by default. If I go to our class defaults and I change this to tap crouch, so it's not going to be hold crouch. Go to our map. And then I tap. I am now crouching. If we look at our character from outside, well, we can't really see the capsule. So I'm just going to make it visible real quick because we're going to need this. Um, 
you can see that it makes the capsule smaller. If I again go into the game and get bigger, you can see that the capsule size is changing. So the only thing that we're really changing is this capsule's component, capsule half height. This is the value that's changing. You can in fact see it if we again make this capsule visible. So not hidden in game. And I go here. What's happening in game is that this value is becoming smaller. And so the camera is just kind of going down as well. So all we need to do is change this from 88 to something like 44. That should pretty much work. So let's do that. When I crouch, I'm going to set capsule half height to 44. And when I uncrouch, I'm going to set it back to what it was, which in this case is 88. And we're going to compile. Now we're going to replace all of these crouch and uncrouch functions with the ones we made. So they're custom crouch and custom uncrouch. So let's just start. Let's try it now. Okay. So the capsule is becoming smaller. And we are seeing the same kind of crouch. It might look a little snappier because we are looking at the capsule. So if we hide that, it should look pretty correct. Okay. You, you can still see a little snap. We'll fix that in a moment. Now, we still need to make it smooth though, but now we have the ability to do that because we actually have the value exposed. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did with the timeline from before. I'm gonna right click, add timeline. I'm gonna call this one the crouch timeline. And whenever we crouch, we're going to play this timeline. And when I uncrouch, I'm going to reverse the timeline just like we did with the running before. And when we update this timeline, we're going to update the capsule half height. The only thing that we don't have at the moment is a value to update. So we're going to double click on the timeline, add a new float track because this is a float value. You can see it right there, float. I'm going to call this uh, timeline track half height. I'm going to make sure the length is something more reasonable like 0.3. And in these 0.3 seconds, we are going to go between two keys. One is going to be at time zero and the other one, or yeah, and the other one is going to be at time 0.3. The first one is going to, let's say, be value 88. So it's going to be uncrouched. And then the, la the next one is going to be value 44. You can press F to view them properly. And we're going to smooth this by selecting both of them and pressing three. Now, if we go back to the event graph, you're going to see that we get a half height value. We can just plug that in here. Whenever we play, the timeline is going to start from here, which is 88. So that's our normal standing height. And it's going to go to 44, which is the crouch height. This is just an obsession, by the way. So just ignore it. You can compile and save. As you can see, the crouching is now smooth. We can move around and it's still very smooth. That's great. Now, you can make this faster, for example, by just dragging this key to the left or changing its time to something smaller. That would take less time to crouch and uncrouch. Make sure to change the timeline's length as well, otherwise you're gonna face some issues later on. So just, just set the timeline length to whatever the last keyframe's time is. And okay, yeah, with that, we basically have most of the crouching done. The one issue we have, well, we actually have a few things that we can resolve. So let's start with one of them. One thing we have is that if I crouch, I can still run, which a lot of times is not something we want. So let's resolve that first. If I go back to the character. You can see that if I go to running, one thing we're doing is we're checking this is falling. This is what allows us to tell if we're jumping or in the air and kind of block the running. 
So we're going to do exactly the same thing with crouching. How do we do that? Is there a magical variable from the character movement component, just like we had with the falling? Not really, especially because we're not using the crouching from here. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to add another variable. It's going to be another Boolean. I'm going to call B crouching. And we're, we ourselves are going to track whether we're crouching or not. The way we do that is we go to our custom crouching functions. And whenever something calls this custom crouch, we just set crouch to true. And whenever something calls the custom uncrouch, we set crouch to false. That will basically mean that this variable is always kind of up to date with the state of the character. Now we go back to the running and right after the is falling, I'm going to add another branch. You can just hover over this uh, line right here, this execution line and press B and click. And in, we're going to drag that to false. Check that we're crouching and only if we're not crouching again, make sure to connect that just like it was only if we are not crouching. So crouching is false, then we can run. But now if I compile, you're going to see that if I crouch, I cannot run. But if I run and then crouch, I am still running. So we still need to fix that. How do we fix that? Well, we fixed it exactly the same way we fixed it with jumping. We fixed it by calling the stop running event, which just changed the speed back. So let's do that whenever we crouch to ignore this part for now. Just go to the functions that we have. And whenever we crouch, so right here, when we call the custom crouch, we can ignore the uncrouch. We can call from here, stop running. And compile. So if I run and crouch, we stop running and I uncrouch, I can still run. That's great. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do, this is the last one. I'm going to change the maximum, the character's maximum walk speed to kind of a, a crouched walk. So we might want to reduce the movement speed a little bit. We're going to do that exactly the same way we did when running. So we're going to kind of just straight up copy it in <laughs> this part. We don't need the whole FOV thing. We can ignore all that. So I'm going to take this character movement set max walk speed. And whenever we crouch right here, I am going to set it to, let's say the default is 600. So let's just set it to 400 and just plug it in. Now, if I walk and then crouch, you're going to see that we move slower. We are not resetting the speed yet, so it is important to, to fix that. We are just in crouch speed forever now. So let's reset the speed. Whenever we stop crouching, we're going to reset the speed back kind of to the movement speed, the normal one. Okay, I'm going to compile. So now if I crouch, I go to the walk speed or the crouch walk speed. And then if I uncrouch, I go to the normal speed. I can run and that goes to the kind of the running speed. And if I crouch, I go to the crouching speed. I uncrouch, I'm going to go to the running because I'm holding that and I can go back to movement normal as well. So that's basically it. I hope that helped. In the next part of this tutorial, we're finally going to be adding the gun that David added a while back. We've had that in the art folder for so long now, the assault rifle. We're going to add that. We're going to add the arms. We're going to start adding animations and just everything is going to immediately become a lot cooler. So stay tuned for that. That's going to come out really soon. I'll see you in that one.